Well, at 7 p.m., I see that our counsel and uh, attorney have joined, and the only one I think we're expecting that isn't on yet is uh, Mike um, Munter. But uh, why don't we get started and uh, keep going along with this meeting. So good evening, and I'd like to welcome you to the fully virtual meeting of the Town of Milton Planning Board for February 21st. Ms. Blanchard, would you please call the attendance of the board? Mr. Marcano? Here. Ms. Padula? Here. Mr. Collins? Here. Ms. Van Danza? Here. Ms. Stevens? Here. Mr. Whittle? Here. Jeremy Barto? Here. Okay, I would also like to note that we have in attendance remotely our engineer, Joel Bianchi, Council William Kennery, Director of Planning and Codes, Bill Lewis, our Board Secretary, Tina Blanchard, and uh, we'll start this evening with a pledge to the flag. Uh, note behind Mr. Lewis is what we have for a flag this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Bill, for finding that at least. <laughs> Okay, I'd, I'd like to start with uh, this evening with welcoming Don LeBaron as our new alternate member of the planning board. Don, if you'd wave and let people see you. I don't know if anybody from the public's out there. I don't think so. Um, Don was appointed by the town board on February 10th and serves as the alternate member on an annual basis. Uh, Don brings many years of construction management experience and other civic engagement in the town. Don, welcome, and would you like to say something to the board or public at this point? Uh, no, not a whole lot. I'm very pleased to have been uh, asked and uh, pleased that I was approved, and um, I'm just going to sit in and listen. Okay, thank you very much, Don, and welcome again. Uh, as an alternate member of the board, you're welcome to fully engage in our project reviews and comment or ask questions. Uh, you won't vote on a project unless we formally engage you as the alternate due to a conflict or other matter that a sitting board member would be choose from. Uh, and you can be appointed for that meeting. But uh, we certainly uh, want our alternate to be active in the reviews that we do. Uh, you can make comments and, and just conduct yourself as, as you, much or as little as you want. Um, for this morning's meeting, we are attending remotely with the board members attending via Zoom. I would ask if any other member wants to make a comment or has a question, please use the chat function on Zoom to let <coughs> Tina know, <coughs> pardon me, or myself that you want them to say something. Uh, there's also that wave hand, raise hand feature. If you put it up, I'll watch for that as well. Uh, and then we'll uh, be trying to monitor it so we can get our attention and let you speak as you, as you may. If anything, unmute yourself and just say, hey, can I a comment? Um, we have a couple opportunities for the public to interface with us this evening, and I would ask that if you're Zooming with us and you want to make a public comment, please use the hand wave feature and alert us to your interest in commenting. You may also use the Q&A feature and submit a question. However, we will not accept anonymous questions. Please submit the name with your question. If you've dialed in on the phone feature of Zoom and would like to make a comment, please call or text Bill Lewis at 518-376. 1831. Is that your correct cell number, Bill? That is, Chairman. Okay. Again, that's 518 376 1831. Provide him your name and interest in making a comment. He'll alert us uh, that you have a comment and we can unmute you uh, and let you in. As with our usual comment protocol, we request that you announce yourself, state your address, and then present your comments in three minutes or less. Finally, uh, you all have seen a few emails this week regarding. Uh, meeting our annual training requirements, and there are a number of upcoming opportunities for online training and several pre-recorded offerings out there on the web. I'll be working with Bill and Tina and our liaison to the town board trying to verify what training would be acceptable and how we can document our required four hours of training. Uh, please watch for some emails from me over the next few weeks that will provide some additional information. I'd also note that Meg Soden from, Soden from uh, the ZBA has been very active on this. You may see some emails from her, too. Uh, for our first order of business, everyone should have had the minutes from our January 20th board meeting. 
I will entertain a motion to approve the January 20th, 2021 planning board meeting minutes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Oops, sorry. John Wood. I'll second. <laughs> Mike Stevens, second. Any discussion or changes to the minutes? There being no changes, uh, Ms. Blanchard, pull the board. Mr. Marcano? Yes. Ms. Padula? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Van Gaza? Yes. Ms. Steven? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Chairman Barco? Yes. At this point, we'll open the meeting to comments from the public. Please note that we also have a public hearing this evening, so if you have comments on that project, please wait until we've opened the hearing so your comments will be on the record. Again, if you'd like to make a comment, use the Q&A feature, raise hand feature, or text Bill Lewis at 518-376-1831. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody. Yeah. That Yep. Sorry, we do have a couple of hands up, one in the panelist, um, and it looks like Mike Munter is in as an attendee. Okay, I can go to Mike Munter and move him to a panelist, which I did. And then, uh... Can we now? Yes, we can, Mike. Okay. okay. We have a couple of attendees. I don't see any hand up there. So I guess it was just Mike trying to get our attention. And John Payne also, but he's put his hand down. So there being no comments from the public, I'll close the comment session. And we'll move on to, we're past 7.05 p.m. We'll move on to our continuation of the public hearing and site plan review application for 352 Rowland Street. Um, the project is for a proposed Napa retail store and an accessory retail commercial office on the same presence. We've got several documents on this project. I won't read them all, yeah, but I will cover the new submissions that we've received uh, for this evening's meeting. The first being a letter of transmittal dated 2321, a response to comments dated 12921, new site plan review application dated 2121 specifying the project is for a business and general office use both permitted as of right in the town center. Proposed elevations, PR3, drawing D, dated 2221. Proposed materials, PR4, drawing E, dated 2221. Revised site plan submission, E, dated 12721. A revised stormwater pollution prevention plan report dated January 2021. And this evening we just received uh, comments from Joel Bianchi giving it MJ Engineering's letter dated 21721. Uh, Mr. Shore, Mr. Hunter, anybody on your team, do you have uh, anything you'd like to present to the board this, this time? I guess I'll take the lead on that. Um, everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So just to pick up where we left off back in January, I believe we've answered most, I'd like to start with the site plan, I guess, to say that I feel we've answered most of the questions that was raised on the site plan. And uh, I think the only open item on that, uh, Chairman Barto is maybe the sidewalk that led from the uh, street sidewalk to the building. Uh, we, that was brought up at the last meeting and we looked to address it. We had designed the site to accommodate that sidewalk in the future, thinking that if there was a more pedestrian natured uh, business present on the site, that it could be added. But uh, after some discussions and thought on that, we're certainly willing to uh, incorporate that sidewalk, understanding the intent of your town center design and the pedestrian feel and really not knowing for sure who our tenant might be, which could be a you know a pedestrian, more pedestrian oriented business other than Napa. Because you know, not many people quite frankly are going to be walking to Napa, but our tenants face they very well could be. So 
So uh, the plan, and maybe Brian might be able to pull that up to show uh, what we've got planned there for the sidewalk, or you would recognize on the site plan you have in front of you that the grading along the entrance road coming into the site will easily accommodate a pedestrian walk by the monument sign, follow the, uh, well, maybe I can kind of show you here. You can see oh, Brian's, Brian's pulling it up. Okay, good. Sorry, I'm not accustomed to presenting on the Zoom, but <laughs> you know, a point and shoot and stuff. But oh, yeah. uh, on board with me tonight, I have Brian Sipperly from Verity Engineering and John Payone from Payone Architecture. And I see uh, my owner, uh, Mr. Shore, is also present here tonight. I see a nice sunset, Brian. But there we go. Do you happen to have the plan that shows the sidewalk on there? Um, but in the meantime, you see the entrance road coming in. So to the left of the entrance, uh, along the blacktop, we would. You know, put a five foot walk in. We'll actually follow the radius to the upper side of the page and uh, come around to the building to where there'd be a crosswalk across the uh, black top that would lead to the front door of the facility. So, uh, looking at many of the other properties in the area, few that have that have uh, done similar things when they have to cross their own egress and entrance points to their facilities. So we felt this was the cleanest uh, approach to the bill. Can you guys hear me? Yes. You can. Okay. I, I had it on mute uh, as well. Mike, uh, if, just give me a moment. I can bring that plan up. But I think just to add some color to what Mike was describing to the board, um, we've kind of go, uh, you know, I stopped sharing my screen, so I guess it's a moot point, but give me, an, give me another second here. I'll do this. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So what Mike was referring to here, um, we've kind of ghosted it in, uh, but as Mike was describing, it follows the inside uh, north edge of the driveway. If people can watch where my mouse is going, it would connect into uh, the street side sidewalk right here. It would go by the proposed signage in and around the loop and protected area. It would terminate here with a step down, and we would cross the driveway uh, over to the east side here. That would what was on here. So um, what I will show the board is, even though it's not shown on the site plan, and many of you on the phone may not necessarily be able to recognize this, but the site has been graded out in the same area where my mouse is here to support the sidewalk. So there's no problem with what Mike is communicating to the board about the inclusion of the sidewalk connector. see my screen at all. You can see actually it had a, a, a version of this site plan showing the sidewalk actually denoted on the plan. Okay. So that we can do. Okay. Um, so I don't know if there's any other Comments or thoughts on that? Uh, we'll get we'll get to that. 
I'd ask uh, <coughs> if uh, Mr. Bianchi or Mr. Lewis, do you have any comments you want to bring to the board before we open the public hearing? Can we can do the public hearing. Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. Joel? Uh, yeah, Chairman, the, my comment letter raised that this was the only outstanding comment. Um, I understand the, the applicant's point about not knowing what the other tenant may be. Um, the question for bail on process, I don't know, you know, what would trigger them to come back to the planning board at some future date, either a change of tenancy or filling that future vacant space, which would then compel them to put the sidewalk in. I don't know that the town of Milton requires change of tenancies to come back before the board. So it's sort of like if we, if the board was to say, yes, we agree with you, put the sidewalk in at a later date, it's sort of a gentleman's agreement without there a mechanism to come back before the board to say, hey, the use is pedestrian driven and therefore the sidewalk goes in. So I just say to the board as you deliberate on this topic, you know, be aware of what would trigger and what does what authority does the planning board or town have to require that sidewalk to go in at some future date? Perhaps of doing it now. That's it, John. Okay. If that's it for those. What uh, we'll do is it is now 17 p.m. I will reconvene the public hearing due to Rowan Street, Napa, Retail Business, Site Plan Review. Does anybody in from the public have any comments? See any attendees raising their hand? Bill, you haven't got anybody calling or anything? Not at this time, Mr. Chair. The no text or no phone calls. Okay. Then uh, there being no further comments uh, from the public, do any of the board members have comments that they'd like to be on the record? The only question I had was with respect to some of the signage on the buildings. I noticed that the lighting looked to be that gooseneck lighting um, pointing down on both the Napa sign and a prospective tenant sign. Um, I wanted to know, is there any backlighting envisioned in any of the lettering or signage that's on the building itself? Um, we have not delved into the final design of the sign, I would say that typically we would have some type of backlight. You know, there's a lot of, but we don't intend to lose the goosenecks, right? You know, the, the goosenecks were a design element on the building to, you know, kind of create that human element feel of the building. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of technology now with low light LED and things to so backlight and, and surveying the other signs throughout the town center that I would say 99% of them are, are backlit in some nature. Um, I can't say that we're not going to also supplement with backlight, but we don't plan to have a, uh, you know, anything out of the ordinary, It'd probably be, you know, above and beyond what you have at this time, some of the other locations. You know, the, the typical Napa sign has some white box with a backlight, but we are considering maybe some gooseneck and some push through. It just, you know, makes it easier to read and, and uh, but not be uh, overwhelming, you can put it that way. I believe most of the at least building lighting that's been in, in the town center that has back lighting is grandfather and came prior to the town center stages that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. I I took the drives 
uh, earlier today, actually. Dunkin' Donuts, Hannaford, Allardyce, Cumberland Farms, Stewart's, everyone has a box, backlit box sign on the building. And I'm not saying that's what we want to do, but I don't want to rule out the fact because we have not designed the signs yet. Okay. But we are totally, we do like to do snacks just from a design perspective on why we want to show them. But with the LED technology and having like push through acrylics that are lit, we're not necessarily wanting a backlit box, but we might want to use some type of backlit feature, you know, to make this really pop without, you know, we're not talking about a Vegas type thing here. You know, uh, you've got electronic digital signs uh, from a dentist to a firehouse to a Dunkin' Donuts. Sunmark is probably your newest approval that I feel has a combination as well where they, they LED light the sign from above onto the glass and I think the back of the glass also glows. So it has a really cool effect. I mean, that's that's kind of what we were envisioning, kind of a uh, exterior lit and potentially back lit acrylic of some sort. Okay. We have, a, we'd be happy to show you the variety of the signs you have, but uh, there's only a few signs that are externally lit. I think one is the... Uh, the golf course and a couple of businesses on Geyser Road uh, heading east, like yep. a couple of doctor and a daycare. And okay. Okay, anybody else from the board have any comments, questions? I do. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, I asked Tina if you could bring samples of the actual um, siding because we got little tiny pictures and then we got it in black and white, so that kind of defeated the area. Yeah, so. we, were, we were hoping for a public uh, opportunity, so I apologize for that. Um, we do have that picture. Maybe John could bring it up on screen to show you that drawing in color. And then I could describe what you're seeing with a sample I have here in my office. But which which drawing would that be? The PR four. Okay. Yep. Hold on. This one. Let me go see if I can find that. Yeah, I have it in the little one that I printed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a bigger one. I should be able to get on the screen. Yeah, we can also show you some of these photos of these uh, products in place, the higher quality photos we bring up. And so these are, let me re-emulate, these are very high quality building products uh, used in our industry. You know, the design of the building is in the nature of its industry. You know, now a days things carry their own identity with their brands and their uh, trades, I guess, and we felt that we had a good combination of keeping this building within the lines of, uh, you know, what what they're selling here, and accommodating some of the features of the town center. You know, with the clapboard. So you can see, you know, what uh, Mr. Payon brought up the steel siding. It's a little cut sheet in the upper left corner, and uh, you know, we've used this on some significant projects, uh, both in Hamlets like Malta and East Greenbush, and that's where the pictures that you see on this PR4 are from. And uh, this is this is the material here. You know, it's a pretty very high quality, durable. High grade finish. Um, you know the, the, the finishes are putting on these types of products now. We almost call them automotive, just with the light of what you're buying. You know, it's 
well above and beyond, I guess, what you get at a lot of the lumber yard, you know, type. Uh, I think my question is the amount of contact that you have with the lumber yard. Yeah. In the drawing, it looks like a very, in, in looking at the little one that I had, it looks like it's a really sharp contrast between the two. Um, it no, looks like a dark gray and a very light gray. If, am I looking at the chart correctly? Well, you should look actually at the, you see the pictures there? I do. Because those are more in line with what? we envision for the contrast you know you have a you do have a charcoal gray and then you have a light gray using this this is the panel actually that you're seeing when you had asked at the last meeting about the vertical lines and the right. vertical siding mm -hmm. it's really a, um, a panelized product and the, the lines you see on that animated drawing are the joints you know, where these panels meet. There's a very light corrugated feature to keep the panel from oil canning. It has an embossed finish on it, which emulates like a ipis or stucco, if you will. Okay. And if we could go back to the pictures, John, you could see that, and maybe we even have one that's more up close, you can really see these two products, you know, within a few feet. These? Yeah. Uh, do we have one of our maybe existing building pictures to show what these look like? You know, those look. You see how you can barely tell where the uh, vertical lines are on the light gray material in that picture? This one. Yes. Yes, I see that. That's what we're showing on the animated picture of the light gray panel. Okay. So it really has a, you know, from, this is, this picture is probably taken from 30 or 40 feet away, which is closer than you would be on the, on Rowland Street. And it really, um, we choose these because the textures work well together. Okay. It almost looks like you have a nice flat panel where the white gray is, and then you have your homey, more residential looking product being the clapboard, which gives you the human element of the building. Okay, thank you. Right. That, that answered my questions. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Then I'm looking at the participants. I don't see anybody raising their hand or anything. So <clears throat> there being no further comments from the public or the board, um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing at 7.28 p.m. I'll make the motion. A little bit. I'll second it. Little. Tina, would you pull the board, please? Mr. Marcano? Yes. Ms. Padula? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Van Danza? Yes. Ms. Stevens? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Chairman Barco? Yes. Okay, with the closure of our public hearing, um, any, any last minute comments, questions, points anybody wants to raise? I just want to circle around on the um, that sidewalk issue. We kind of left it open. Yep. Um, is that is that something that we want to handle here in the um, in any type of potential uh, motion for approval, um, or is that something we want to handle as an as an escrow for so many years, or is that something we want to handle as a as a as a comeback? If a if a business if a business that would uh, benefit from it or put it in, um, you know, I'm looking kind of like for the board to kind of you know for us to have a little chat about it to see yep. 
um, which way we want to go in that. Um, I think they took a, a rather long way around, though, but if, you know, if the applicant wants to do that, that's, that'll work. I agree. I guess our constraints and part of the thoughts on our end, we kind of had to take the long way around to our blue pine area and detention plans. If we can find a way to sneak through the front, we could even make it more inviting and maybe safer for a pedestrian. We would, but we wanted to show that it could be done there. Because in the winter, it's, it also may complicate your plowing as well. Because you'll lose that ability. You'd have to push it all the way across. Right. Or push it over the sidewalk. challenge is number one we don't know what the second retail or office use will ultimately be you know, would it be something that pedestrians would use or whatnot and then uh, Mike we talked earlier today that you might want to expand the uses that are being requested in the special use permit for the site plan approval to include other permitted uses such as personal service Building materials, supply, you know, uh, since they're all purposes and you wouldn't have to come back. Because we we don't get to go back, my understanding, and I'll ask Mr. Kennery to confirm it, we don't get to go back with a change of tenancy and re review a project. We do get to go back if there's an alteration in the town center, <clears throat> but um, I don't know that we do for any other. <clears throat> Or if it was a special use permit, obviously you would. Is that correct, Bill? Hundred percent, Mr. Chairman, and it's important, I think, for, for um, the applicant to be equally mindful of this as the board is. Um, under the Milton Town Code at Section 180-50, all new uses or alterations in the town district shall require site plan review by the planning board and such review shall be conducted subject to the town center design guidelines. So you're absolutely correct. All new uses or alterations shall require site plan. And the board members will remember because we've been through this relatively recently on another project in the town center district uh, where there's some changes to the site plan. So. Um, to your point, relative to the applicant's potential designation of a tenant or a change in tenancy, under the Milton Town Code, that would not trigger a return under site plan. Only a new use or alteration would trigger it. And, and just if I could, just to further in our town center guidelines, it does say uh, to to attempt to make it pedestrian friendly, right? Yes. So, so in we have to we have to measure that, which is why we brought up the sidewalks. We have to measure that in the approval. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, um, but it is possible to do some sort of escrow or something, or have it done within five years or something like that. Um, oh. But. I understand where you're coming from, and I, I, I can um, relate to that in the light that we do want to expand our potential uses from what we had on the, you know, we want to, we basically want to be allowed to, to use all permitted uses. For our site, I guess, barring 
hotels. I don't know if this would become a hotel. Um, so that would be accessory retail, bar, I don't know what accessory structure, home occupation, class one, personal service, and restaurant. So I can definitely see where those could be pedestrian uh, friendly uses. So I don't feel that we're opposed to putting the sidewalk in with the uh, you know base project because it's definitely going to be cheaper to do it while we're there building it now and not have to go back and not have to go through this. We agree. I might say that I might ask our engineers to get creative and maybe try to find a straighter path <laughs> to get to the front door. As you recommended, Mr. Whittle, so, you know, if once we get to the final, you know, looking at, revisit the grading and stuff, but I don't feel it's anything, we agree to do the sidewalk with the board, it would be a technical item, maybe with your uh, TDE that we just either put it in the way that we had planned, or if we can find a path between the lupine and the tension basin to sneak it in right in the middle of the property, which would definitely be more light. Tom? Go ahead. Um, I'd like to see it go in when the property is put in because we don't know what's going to be there like in five years or whatever. And even putting it in escrow, so in year six somebody comes in and needs a sidewalk and it's not there. So I'd like to see it go in as the project goes in. Yes. As I, as I look at the proposal, the logical thing would be have a straight sidewalk to the entrance of the building, but that's not in the plan feasible. What what are the possibilities to get around that restriction? Well, I think they've given us one, which is the follow the drive, and then Mike Munter was just commenting. I don't know if Brian can pull that map up again. I'm thinking in the spirit of what they're proposing to applicants made that gesture within what the property barriers are so unless somebody being us or someone else gives them a more straight approach to that what more can they do well the only thing I, you know, mike was mentioning is perhaps between where the carnival butterfly habitat is and the basin you might get something in there um, but it could be challenging so in summary, I guess what I was saying is we'll give you a sidewalk. Yep. But do you really care where it is? As long as that, that'd be, that's my question right there, Mike. And <laughs> I, I think I, as long as you can, I mean, you know what our intent is to get yeah. us pedestrian access. And I'd be willing to put a condition that says you do it to the best that you can design it. I mean, obviously, even if you could go the route by the um, corner blue butterfly, you know, further north, it would be a shorter sidewalk. Yep. Yeah if you can get in there but you got a, you got a, a little bit of a retention base in there you might have safety issues you get worried about i would leave that to you and our engineer and building inspector to yep. decide which of those are best and you think we can trust that i guess it boils down to my mind is it butterflies or is it sidewalks i mean where yeah. are we at i think i think well i won't go i think it's both <laughs> well uh, i don't I don't think I need to walk past butterflies or walk up a sidewalk. So, to be honest with you, I'm not. I don't really care. I think the applicants made a good faith gesture okay. to make a sidewalk approach. Agree. So we'll 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 put a sidewalk in. We'll have a way to get to the door. I, that's what I would assume right out of the gate. And then the other one I was going to suggest is, as, as Mike had said, and we had talked uh, between the meetings, that to add some of the permitted uses now, so in the event, he doesn't even know who the next tenant's going to be. So in addition to the retail and general office, we would add personal service, building material supply, restaurants, accessory retail, and bar. Everybody's playing it. I don't have a problem with that as long as our engineer has evaluated his um, his connections to the public services to support such an endeavor. 
Um, there's different connections required for that, such as and grease traps and yep. stuff like that. So he would have to install that as part of the plan. Uh, but that would be, I believe, uh, Bill. If I'm right, I don't see you because of the picturing. Yes, that um, would be a that, that would be a, that would be a permitting thing. Yes, yes that's that's a permitting. Permitting. But I want to bring it up now so that it's it's not a misunderstanding. Oh, I didn't understand. I didn't. Nope. That, no, that there would be definitely definitely at the uh, time of the fit up of the space. If they were uh, when if they were to move a restaurant or whatever, and they would do a fit up of the space, we would do the review and make sure they have the appropriate uh, grease traps, uh, sewer uh, sewer connections if if needed. That would all be under the permit stage. Did you hear me? Yep. Okay. Chairman Barco, one 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 item I ahead, do want to add is, you know, if the board is going to entertain other special uses, no special. I'll have a, no I'll have a question for for Bill. Uh, do any of those other uses at any time trigger another site plan review by the board? The reason I ask that question is, is some of the other uses that are available that were not orig originally requested bring in certain other elements that were not reviewed. As an example, if you are going to permit a restaurant, a restaurant brings in a different type of traffic. Um, there are other, you know, hours of operation that may be beyond what a NAPA will have. Those hours of operations may bring other elements in that have not been contemplated or reviewed. I just want the, want the board to be aware of those. That is just one element of thing that we did not review on. We did comment on that in our first review about, hey, you're, you're proposing or, or requesting a menu of special uses, yet to do an environmental review against all of them is very complex. And the, the applicant, I believe, then reduce the number of special uses and now they're asking to I think bring some of those back in so the board should just be aware of that and if there's any triggers in the future which would then bring them back to the board to do another seeker review and or other element review associated with those other uses. I just want to be clear the uses that I listed out are all permitted as of right none require a special use permit um, and that's what they we had talked about with them earlier. Okay. Understood. So, so the, and we purposely left off those with special uses and, and cautioned that, for example, if you brought a restaurant in but then you wanted a drive through window, that's a special use permit. Right. So it's not going to be very accommodating. So you're going to even be limited to the type of restaurant you could have here. You know, if it was just a small lunchtime restaurant, that just has some walk-in and take-out you know, drive-through. It's not going to create. And I, the parking, Mike, you mentioned you use the restaurant standard. Yeah, um, we looked at the retail and employee count, and actually that use overlaid with the hours of Napa would work hand in hand if it came to be, because uh, you know most. Uh, Jeff might comment, but I believe Napa is open till six or whenever seven. Um, and I, uh, we addressed the hours of operation previously. I think asking to be open till twelve a.m. So we're we're covered with the hours and with the size of the um, tenant space that we have. It's not going to be a huge restaurant or tenant of any size so we felt that the parking met or exceeded that especially with the bank parking on the uh, outside of the property. Does anybody have any concerns about that at all? If we just do those permitted uses? Is there any one of them they might not want to see at this point i'm i'm thinking that that's really i mean it's pretty close to the neighbors in the back is that the place where you'd want a bar that yeah. goes till two in the morning or whatever no i hope they'll do could so 
so, so John, with, dis with disapproval, then just to be to be very clear about this, if you the board was to approve this plus the other uses, are we also contemplating you are limited to these hours of operation? We have not put a standard of limited hours of operation. Right, and, and, and there was a good point that if you if you allow a restaurant that evolves into a possibly a, a, a tavern that is open till four a.m. in the morning, what are those what are those collateral impacts to the residents to the Rio? I can just comment as a business owner on this one. I mean, I, I know that I just I would have no interest of in having that type of tenant share a space with my facility. But anyway, and, and, uh, I completely understand that. But who says that you are the perpetual owner of this property, and then right. someone else comes in sure. and has the sure. right to do this use, mm. but the town has no latitude to go and force something that they didn't apply as part of a condition of approval. Well, then we could always just, if the board would prefer, not include the restaurant and bar in the list. It would be personal service, building material supply, and extra retail. All which would tend to fit their same hours of operation. I'd prefer that myself. I don't think that's the right place for a bar or a restaurant. I'm fine with that. I mean, they could always come back in the future and say, well, and, and Absolutely, John. I don't think we, the board would be denying them the opportunity to come back. It's just covering all the bases by giving them a, a theoretical open-ended approval for all these other uses yeah. without having the opportunity to fully vet those. I'd, I'd be satisfied with that, too, because it would remove the other concerns you'd look at, such as trash and removal and noise. and. Okay. <clears throat> so then it would be the permitted uses of general office, retail, personal service, building material supplies, and accessory retail. I'd say that'd be reasonable, Chairman, and I think it'd also be reasonable to expect that they could apply for variations after that. Could easily come in for the additional permitted uses, could easily come in for special permit uses down the road. Having said that, I think all that, that would be very reasonable as a way to approach it. Okay. Can I make one? ask or comment. Um, sure. I understand the bar. Um, the restaurant has got a lot of latitude. I mean, from diners that are only open during the day to, like you said, canned food that you grab and take out. Is there a way to just keep restaurant in but do limit the hours of operation? Or pipe, just in case there's a a sub shop or something that would close at nine o'clock at night anyway. I don't want to throw that possibility out. You know, uh, every restaurant. Can... So there's a lot of uh, potential of restaurants that still might fit the bill. Not annoy neighbors. The type of business that Mr. Shore might want to do. In the you know? I think, Mr. Chairman, with respect to the um, code, the code to some extent anticipates that the board would have an opportunity to review those changes in use um, if the applicant were successful in securing a tenant. Uh, perhaps that would be the time to review the specifics as it relates to that new tenant or that new use. But it is certainly a board choice. But I thought I thought we just said earlier that uh, a change of tenants does not trigger a review. Right. I'm saying correct. If if you exclude the use at this time. And then they came back and said, we've got this tenant prospect for a new use that's not permitted. Then the board would have the ability to review these types of details as it relates to that specific uh, tenant that perhaps Mr. Shore has uh, secured. 
I think what we're saying is we're not excluding anything. We're just saying that with this approval, it will include general office, retail, personal service, building material supply, accessory retail, so that if those uses come in, they don't got to come back to us. That's yeah. exactly right. Come and you don't want to us. preclude, that's right. You don't want to preclude their ability to return for the uses that are not contemplated at this time, but those uses might come into play in the future. Sure. Somebody might come up with a fast food drive restaurant. Somebody may come up, who knows, they could come up with a hotel if they decided to change the whole thing. We don't know what it is. We're not, we're not precluding that. We're just not saying that I've included this approval. So I guess I would go back and just say, what do people think of Mike Munter's suggestion that restaurant be limited? Mr. Kerry, could I ask a question, please? Would it be safe to say that end user as a leasee would have to be subject to approval? As it stands, yeah, as it stands now under the code, and, and we typically do not get involved in the identity of that particular tenant. Of course, that's between the owner uh, and the prospective tenant. In these and the focus is on use or alteration. That would be the trigger to um, either cause the applicant or warrant the board to look at it. Uh, tip, and typically when the landlord secures that new tenant, um, the landlord is in with the town pretty promptly because they want to get the contingency out of a potential lease and get it, get it nailed down. So I think it's more likely that the landlord would be successful in the negotiations with the tenant and then indicate to the tenant We've got to get your use approved at the town. And of course, in this instance, relative to that question, if, if the board is inclined to not preclude any of these uses in the future, they would have an absolute right to come back to ask for any of these uses in the future, or as the chairman has pointed out, any of the special permit uses. They could make an application for that as well. Thank you. So if we just, so I'm making sure that I got this clearly, I believe I do. So if we just list the ones that John has stated, the retail business, the office, the um, building supply, and we don't exclude, we don't put anything in it at all, in our motion at all, regarding restaurants or bars, then if that happens, if that's a tenant they get in the future, they just come in for the special use permit for that, correct? They come in for the site plan or a special use permit. Oh, so yeah. our restaurant does not require a special use permit. Understood. The fact that it wasn't included in our list, they have to come to us because it's a change in use. Okay, thank you. John, I, I feel like I am comfortable leaving off restaurants now, especially since we're not precluding them from, you know, pursuing that later. I think it would be a real surprise to those residents behind that property if we included it tonight. And, and I don't know that any of them would have known about that. So I, I support your suggestion that we, we, at this time, include the ones you listed and just leave off restaurants for now. Okay. Okay. Any other comments at this point? If not, I'll entertain a motion to a resolution for the planning board approving site plan approval for 352 Rowland Street. <clears throat> and uh, subject to uh, two conditions. One, uh, a sidewalk to be put in and located with details to be approved by the building inspector and town engineer and two, that it be for the permitted uses of retail business, general office, per personal service, building supply material, and accessory retail. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I'll second. 
Was that Meg? Yes. And Mr. Chairman, in your discussion, my sense is that the intent is, so that the resolution is clear, not to preclude the applicant from returning under the code for any use that's not specifically approved tonight. Yes. Great. Okay, with that, uh, Ms. Blanchard, we will pull the board. Mr. Marciano? Uh, yes, I think this uh, provides a larger, well-known retailer, another good addition to town center, and that it provides more variety in the services available. Ms. Padula? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Vendenza? Yes. Ms. Steven? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Chairman Barco? Uh, yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Shore. Good luck on your endeavors. And uh, thank you, Mr. Munter and your team for design and putting up with us. And uh, look forward to seeing this business get underway. You pay taxes. <laughs> thank you for the board. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, yeah. we appreciate it. Thank you for your work. work. From everyone has helped advance the project and uh, look forward to bringing this to life. Okay. I'll have a copy of this resolution in the next day or two down in the town hall and make sure you get it. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. Yep. Thank you. Is there any other business to be brought before the board? There being no other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 7.57 p.m. I'll make that motion. Yeah. I'll second. Chairman Little, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Hopefully you get a vaccination soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Tina. All right, Thank everybody. You. And I'll keep you posted as to next month's meeting. Yep.